G'day everyone, you guys are loving this series and I'm loving doing it, so let's do more. My team put together the descriptions for me and we're gonna try and recreate them from that and guess who's from what. Two very quick things I just wanted to cover first. One, thank you so much for making this series work. You guys know how much I love character design and it's been really hard to get YouTube to let me do that because there's something about these characters and monsters from descriptions that you guys really enjoyed and I've gotten to really sink my teeth into it in a way that I haven't in a long time and I'm really grateful for that. So every time you hit the like button or every minute you watch of these videos, thank you. It really actually makes a huge difference and lets me keep doing it. Two, there is only one week left for the Pro Sketch Pack. This is no longer gonna be available this time next week. There's over $200 worth of materials for only $99 and you can split the payments. And if you lack the confidence to invest yourself like that, there is a sketch guide so that I can take you through the journey and helping you make sketching fun. So set yourself up for a future of art and creativity. My Pro Sketch Pack will join your journey and make you happy. Links in the description, prosketchpack.com. One week left. Don't miss out. With those little housekeeping things tucked aside, let's jump into our first monster. Monster one. We have an atmosphere. This is the 19th century. A tall old man, clean shaven except long, thick, white mustache, dressed completely in black, strong, thin, beak-like nose with a high, high bridge, and particularly arched nostrils. Big domed forehead, white hair, thin at the temples, thick everywhere else. Bushy massive eyebrows, peculiarly sharp white teeth protruding over the lip. I'm baffled as to how descriptive this one is and how I can't guess what it's from. Deep burning eyes, extremely pale, broad short hands, short fingers, fingernails cut to a point. No clue. Now we've done a few of these now and they're so satisfying. So if you want to go see any of the other ones, I'll link to a playlist in the description specifically for this series. If you guys are really enjoying this, I want to make it easy for any of you who have discovered the series through this video to go binge watch all of them and of course find future videos on there. Now our first monster from description seemed pretty incomprehensible to begin with, but it's one of those things where as soon as you start putting them down on the page, all of those features start to seem pretty familiar and you get a bit of an idea as to who you think it is. So I found myself drawing basically an old man and uh, I wanted to find a way to, to make it more monstrous and accentuate it a little bit because even after a few first sketches, there wasn't a lot monstrous about it. So I did a little bit of a rough construction play where I took some of those features of the description and over accentuated from the dome forehead leaning down into this hooked and hanging forward nose with the high bridge and upturned nostrils which with a broad strong chin jutting out from beneath sort of has the face caving in on itself a little bit in the center add to that some of the more specifically monstrous features really deep eyes pointed ears and some sharp teeth peeking through and then you start to get a bit of a monster happening I also did a bit of a sketch to sort of see what the hands would look like I thought it was an interesting description that they're these broad hands with short fingers and fingernails cut to a point. I sort of never imagined this sort of character would have sort of broad stumpy fingers but sharp fingernails. The other thing I needed to figure out was the outfit and with the setting being in the 19th century simply googling 19th century male black outfit you get a pretty quick vibe. So leaping into my final epic sketch, I did my best to incorporate all of those features into one final sketch that would really make each feature make sense as to why they were described. With the core of my sketch in place, it was time to move on to the line work and really bring this thing together. This is my favorite pen. As you can see, I can get really sharp, fine details, but also nice thick lines. It's really satisfying to work with and feels really reliable. Now, as I move on to color, even though there really isn't a lot of color described, is described as wearing black, black doesn't all look the same. And just by using some of my different types of black inks, I could actually get a variety of 
black feel in the costume. And then by using my long brush pen, which as you can see has a lot of coverage, it's a much more desaturated black with a touch of a warm tone to it. So by using a little bit more of a comic book style shading effect to create a solid black with some shine, I was able to create the look of a character wearing various black items of clothing, but they feel different. All in all, in bringing this together, I'm so happy with how it's turning out. And all I need to do is add that little bit of pop by shading around and behind him, which I could then accentuate with a white marker around the edges and add that little flourish of pop right in those details. A little bit of red around the gums and in that deep eye area to make him look really raw and manic, specifically deep burning eyes. So the red sort of helps accentuate that. And hey, he's dressing up. So he's wearing a nice red pocket square. All right, it's reveal time for Monster One. Put your guesses in the description. I'm pretty confident. I think it is, I'll say it before I swipe, Dracula. Boom, Dracula. I am fascinated that he's originally described as having a bushy <laughs> mustache. And it's so interesting because who we picture as Dracula has been so solidified by the film and television depictions, which is, you know, slicked back hair, no facial hair, large fangs. I don't even remember there being pointy ears as, as many of the Dracula depictions. I love this. I think that's really cool. There's like this old gentlemanly creepiness about it. In fact, I think the mustache has a touch of a genteel refinement. I, I like mine. I'm really happy with it. Let me know what you think. Now on to monster number two. And our description is a ridged head covered with mucus. A strong start. Four tentacles around a circular mouth ringed with many teeth. Each tentacle two to four feet long. What? <laughs> Flowing dramatic robes adorned with decorations, high flaring collar, dark hat, human-like height and build, slimy violet skin, three fingers and thumb on each hand with thick, blunt, black fingernails, dead white eyes with no pupils. No idea. Now with this monster description, there's a lot more happening. <laughs> Ridged head and slime, what, mucus? Whenever there's so much in here, it's sort of hard to process. I kind of just prefer to draw all the individual elements on one page just so I can see it all and figure out how to fit it together. So in this case, the ridged forehead, some of the tentacles. The robes were an interesting one in particular. We have flowing dramatic robes adorned with decorations. So while we have all these monstrous features, this is a monster that's dressing in a very intentional and refined way, which I find fascinating. And then there's a high flaring collar and a dark hat. I had to figure out what the hat would look like, but I'll come back to that. Suffice it to say, I was getting the feel that this was a sentient, if not eloquent and intelligent character, but much more monstrous than our previous one. I tried experimenting with the tentacles and the open mouth with the ringed circular mouth with many teeth, but it seemed a little too monstrous. Maybe that's like when he's in full monster mode, but something tells me that this is a character that's more reserved. So I experimented with some different faces with specifically four tentacles, which are quite long. Everything I drew ended up looking quite mustachey, like it has two mustachey things at the top of the face and then turns into two beardy bits which I think works pretty well, but also adds to that wizened look. Again, we're leaning more towards a refined character design from the description. With each of these different experiments, I mucked around with a different hat look, because what the hell do you do for a hat for a character like this? Some of these details I tend to trust leaving to the final piece because I feel like sometimes it just comes together when you put all of the stuff together. But I did have a pretty clear idea as to what the face would look like and of course what the pose would look like. Though he's not described as uh, holding a glass of wine or blood, for some reason I felt like this is a character that has the sort of uh, refined villainousness as uh, Hannibal Lecter from Silence of the Lambs. Just, you know, more tentacles. <laughs> So let's bring this piece to life. Starting off with my rough construction sketch, focusing primarily on the pose. While there are a lot of monstrous features about this character, this is the sort of monster that I really feel like has a presence, has a, an imposing feel about it. 
After going over my rough post sketch with my refined pencil and sketch work, it was time to really make this sing. Now, I really felt like, especially with the flowing nature of the robes, there's got to be movement in the piece, not only on the character, but around him. So I started off by putting a layer of this liquid graphite all the way around the piece, mainly in the deepest area of the robes, that I could then, when adding water, deepen, darken, and add a more misty, soft, and ethereal look to, and work into the smoke look that I wanted to add to the background. All of this to add this feeling of whirring and suction, like a vacuum of darkness or magic. Speaking of darkness, we're going full dark here. I grab my black marker and create a vortex of darkness emanating from behind this character, both to, again, add to the sense of motion and drama, but also to accentuate the character. I'm pretty happy with this pose and I want to highlight and dramatize him. So by adding all of this black and then blending it with the warm grays in the background, it creates a double effect of both adding drama and motion, but also adding contrast. So I can really frame out this character's pose. Finding the details on the character really started to make it come together, but it does need a little pop of colour. Having been described as having violet skin, and though the robes aren't described as being coloured in any sense, they're not described as being black, and they are described as being dramatic and flowing, so I thought this monster has, you know, a sense of fashion. Adding a touch of red to his costume, I'm really happy with how all these different choices has come together, including the interestingly horned shaped hat on his head, which again, feels a little more monstrous. With a final white outline around the edges to add that final accentuation to the silhouette. I love this piece and it really feels like it's jumping right out at you. I hope you're having as much fun as I am with my materials and sketches. There are some other people who are having just as much fun as I am that I wanted to share with you because they've shared with me and it's really brightened my year. Sarah Winthercop got her daughter the pro sketch back for her 12th birthday and she's getting stuck into it. And I'm loving that. I love that when like young people are really in that discovery phase. And Paul got his today too and he's having a cracker of a time. Robert, your daughter and her eager look of excitement for art is just adorable. Smushy Penguin says, Thank you, Jazz, for always making high quality boxes that are affordable. I've been fortunate enough to be able to grab every art box you've made. They're all amazing. I'm so grateful for everyone who supported this journey so far. And it's so fun to me to see everyone enjoying it. And I thought you might get a kick out of it too. Monster number two reveal. Uh, now, were I to guess, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to feel like I knew it when it reveals it to me. But I can't off the top of my head think of the name. I don't know what it's called, but it's like something from Dungeons and Dragons. It's a mind flayer from Dungeons and Dragons. See, I knew what that was once it told me. <laughs> I'm really happy with my depiction. Although with that said, the original depictions obviously hit the mark perfectly well too. In fact, they're probably slightly more monstrous, but there's something more wizardy and human about mine, which, you know, there's probably a place for that. I want to go right into the next one. Monster description number three, a tall, skeletally thin man wearing black robes. This is in the modern day. Skin whiter than a skull. That's pretty this is pretty white. Wide scarlet eyes with splitted pupils, a nose as flat as a snake, slits for nostrils. Not a handsome sounding person. <laughs> Hands with long fingers like large pale spiders. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Let's jump into it. Now this is one of the ones that once you start putting things down, it's pretty clear who it is. Except that I remember my first impression of who I think this is on the cinema screen when I was a kid and it felt different, felt not as cool as I imagined in the books. I'm being elusive, but I'm just trying not to spoil it for people who may not have guessed. Anyways, I'm just trying to recreate this character from only the description. So having drawn a skeletally thin man and putting robes on them, which are the first two 
descriptors, this very gloomy, very loomy picture starts to come together quite quickly. And with a lot of references to skeletalness, both skeletally thin and then skin whiter than a skull, I found myself leaning on the skull aesthetic quite a bit, especially when constructing the face. Rather than doing face construction, I use skull construction and wrap the skin like saran wrap around it. And then of course we have the other features that pop. The super white skin, wide scarlet eyes and the slitted nostrils, flat nose like a snake and long fingered hands like pale spiders. Now honestly, aside from the nose, eyes and I guess hands, there's not a lot of specificity around the aesthetic or design of this character. It's sort of a just a general look. You're going to assume that this monster is human because the only things that are described are just how they've strayed from being human-like. So to make this design have impact, to make this monster really stand out and feel monstrous, I need to lean into those features as much as I can. So moving on to my final piece. When he's described as being tall and skeletally thin, I want this to be a character looking down at you. So I did my sketch with a tall looming pose with a feeling that you might be approaching him and he's spotted you. Now aside from setting up his general pose and construction, to be nice and dominating and scary, I wanted to find a way to make it clear that the skin is wider than a skull. And what better way to do that than have him hold a skull and then you have a direct point of comparison. Oh look, his skin's wider than the skull he's holding. <laughs> and with my sketch in place, it's time to move on to the line work. Once again, this pen comes in to save the day. I mean, not that the day needed saving. This has gone pretty well so far. I just love that I can use this for thick outlines and really sharp, accurate cross hatching and detailing. So satisfying. And when it comes to contrast, this design is pretty straightforward because there's a lot of paleness and there's also black robes. So that's as contrasty as you can get. So once the black robes are down, it's just a matter of really making the skin feel white, white enough to be a really dominant feature that would be mentioned. Further accentuating this, I added a nice soft graphite texture in the background, again adding that sort of feel of magic or invasive darkness. And now it just comes down to the final touches that make all the difference. I shade in the teeth with the same colours that I used for the skull, which in comparison to his skin make his teeth look a little decaying and dark and yellowing, which is kind of perfect. And then of course his eyes are described as wide and scarlet with slitted pupils. So using my red pencils, shading as if they're bloodshot eyes where the bloodshotness has gone out of control and just overtaken the eyes, I reinforce those slitted pupils and use my white pen to add the final highlights. The slimy gleam on the surface of the crimson eyes and a touch of spittle connecting his devious teeth. Alright, we know who this is. You clicked on the thumbnail for him. He is Voldemort. But it's interesting because I can't help but like honestly confess that when I first watched the movies, like I said in the voiceover, I was pretty underwhelmed with Voldemort. Hey, he just looks a little too human to me. Now here's a depiction that isn't the movie depiction. To me, that's way more monstrous. That's really cool. I feel like the movie should have been like that. Or like this. I am really happy with that. I think that feels to me like a pretty cool Voldemort. If that came up on the screen, kid me would have been pretty happy with that. And you know what? Grown up me is pretty happy with this. And I'm so glad and grateful that you've enjoyed these videos so far. So I certainly hope if you keep enjoying them that I can keep delivering it because yeah, I, this never gets old for me and I have a cool job. Thanks for making it possible. <laughs> I'll see you in the next video. I don't know what that was. I'll, uh, smoke disappear trick. And add smoke in there. And then I'll, there you go.